Well, let's have a look at a median here. I'm going to draw a midpoint of this one side of the triangle, AC, and I'm going to connect that to the opposite vertex. And a nice little description of a median might look like this. And we just say a median, well, it's a segment that connects the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, just like I've got there. Maybe you're visualizing this being a perspective drawing and imagine you're driving down a road. It kind of looks like that, the median, the middle of the road, and as it disappears to this vanishing point here. Well, that's how I look at it. But, of course, as with all the other points of concurrency, we've got three sides to every triangle. So, I'll draw right here. I've got a midpoint D, and I'll draw DC. And I've got one more. BC has a midpoint, of course. And I'll draw a segment from its opposite vertex to that midpoint. And as you expect by now, these three medians all connect at one single point. And that single point is known as the centroid. Neat thing here, the centroid, which would happen to be the center of balance of this object, the centroid is two-thirds of the way, let's say from a vertex, to the opposite midpoint. Another way of saying it, this red segment is two-thirds of the entire segment. Or you could say this red segment is twice as long as this one, since after all this is two-thirds and, the, and this segment is one-third. Well this picture says it all. Let's compare the perpendicular bisector. Again it's perpendicular and it bisects a segment We'll compare that to the median, which connects a midpoint of a segment to the opposite vertex, and an altitude, which is perpendicular to a side or extension from the side as drawn from a vertex. So this picture really says it all. And you can imagine, you could have something like this. Actually, all three can become one in the case of an isosceles triangle. But there you go. And there you have with a right triangle. Hmm, interesting. So remember, these are three different things. Perpendicular bisector, median, altitude. We're again starting with G, the centroid. And now I'm solving for BF, which is this median. I've got this section from the vertex, which is 6. And that's, we know by theorem 5.8, that's 2 thirds of the distance. So you can probably do this in your head, but to keep you from being confused, or if you want to be formal, let's write it out. I know that BF, well, or BG, I should say, is equal to two-thirds of BF. I'm going to write it down this way. I put BF on the left because that's, what, that's where I want to end up. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient, okay, algebra, right? Because we know that that's going to simplify uh, any number times its reciprocal is 1, or unity. So we come back to this. Aha, uh -huh. so again, if BG is 2 thirds of BF, then BF is 3 halves, or 1 and a half times BG. And we'll just put some numbers in there. And you can see 3 halves, or 1 and a half times 6, is 9. So that's our segment. Well, number 5, slam dunk by comparison. I'm looking for AG, this red segment. And I know this entire median is 15 right there. I'm going to take two-thirds of it because from the vertex end, it's two-thirds of the median. And that is to the centroid. So, right there. And two-thirds of 15, you can all do that. And that's going to be 10. So the segment is 10. Wow, look at this triangle. M is the centroid. And I'm given a bunch of information, CM 36, MQ is 30, and TS 56. You want to know what is AM, the red segment here. Well, to be honest, this one, this one, distractions. All we need is right here. If you remember, the theorem we just talked about with our concurrency, M is two-thirds the distance from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Think of it this way, two parts to one part, two to one. So AM must be choice D, 60. 
Well, now we're going to find the centroid of this triangle on the coordinate plane. And we're going to need our friend the midpoint formula. And that's pretty straightforward. Well, let's find these midpoints. Right there, if P is the midpoint of ST, I could use the formula or, or just do what we did before, say find the middle. What's in the middle of 5 and 11? And what is in the middle of negative 3 and positive 5? No matter how you do it, the coordinates of P are 8, 1. Now we could move down to R down here, and we'll do the same thing, 5, negative 1. Now let's draw these segments. We we'll draw this segment and this one. And you can see right away, we already know where the centroid is, because we've got a vertical line here. This was set up to be really easy got a vertical line here I could tell because we have a constant x or abscissa and my y here are ordinate our y value is constant so these two must intersect at the point 5 1 that would be the location of the centroid and we can confirm now we'll just take this value since I know that this segment I'm going to take two-thirds, well, let me see, the length of this horizontal segment, UP, is of course 9, from negative 1 to 8, two-thirds of that is 6. This vertical segment here, from negative 1 to positive 5, is a distance of 6, and I'll take two-thirds of that, and I'll get 4. So it does check out. So again, two-thirds of this segment gives me my 4, two-thirds of this segment gives me my six. Okay, we're going to graph this centroid of this triangle. Here's our three points, A, B, C. Should be able to plot those by now. And we're going to draw our triangle. And in case you need the midpoint formula, it's right there. But you know what I, we do. We just take the middle of two numbers. The middle of negative one and five, for instance. Well, I know that's a distance of six, so that well, let's just plot. Right away, you're noticing that BC is vertical. That's going to make this very easy because that means that one of my medians is horizontal. And that's going to keep us from having to use the distance formula. It'd be really easy stuff. So that's the centroid point P. And right here, I know from negative 1 to positive 5 is a distance of 6. And given there, this is 2 thirds, this is 1 third, well that's pretty straightforward. This piece is 4, this piece is 2. So I can take this point, count 2 to the left, take this point, count 4 to the right. Either way, I'm going to come up with 3, 2. Let's graph another centroid. There's A, B, C, we'll draw in our triangle. You can use the midpoint formula if you like, but you've got to find these midpoints. Oh, there's the F word. That would be fractions. One and a half, seven. Four and a half, four. Be not afeared. It'll work out okay. And you'll get your integral answers as you all like. I'll draw my medians. And then I'm going to notice again, I'm given an easy time here because I'm given a horizontal median with a measure of four and a half and I'm given a vertical median with a measure of nine from one to ten. So in either case all I've got to do I'm going to take two-thirds. Well I could take two-thirds and work from the vertex or one-third and work from the midpoint. Either way I'm taking two-thirds. Two-thirds of four and a half is three, three units this direction, or two-thirds of nine, which is six, means six descending from this vertex. Either way, you're going to come up with, are you ready for it? Ta-da! Your centroid has coordinates three, four. Well, let's make use of this centroid. We're given values for BD and BF. First thing I'm going to do is mark them right here. Well, BD is this piece. It's the segment from the vertex to the centroid. And 9x is the entire median. 
And our theorem 5.8 tells us that this segment is exactly two-thirds of this segment. So there you go. There's a the setup. And let's just substitute these expressions. Simplify. And the rest is just arithmetic. Well, another median exercise. Here we go. I'm given an expression for the entire median. And this time it's the short segment. That is the one-third segment from the, um, from the centroid to the midpoint of the opposite side. So right there, I could set this up this way. This segment is one-third of this one. Alternatively, I could say that this segment is three times this one. And now, honestly, I chose, I went with the former this time, really because I could factor out the three easily. Otherwise, I would have used the alternative. And right away, do a little distributive. And there you go. And a little subtraction. And we're done. This one's a little bit different. Look what I'm given now. I'm given this segment AD and this segment DE. Remember, this segment is the two-thirds segment. This is the one-third segment of the median. So I guess these are in the ratio of two parts to one part, or two to one. So let's set it up. Then AD is equal to two of these. And then substitution, and it's just arithmetic. And there you go.